you guys here use Tumblr? Show of hands. Okay, so a fair number of you. For those of you who don't know, Tumblr is a popular microblogging platform that I frankly admit to spending a little bit too much time on. The premise of Tumblr is around the concept of reblogging, or reposting content, aggregating content onto your blog from other people's blogs. So therefore, the more reblogs that a post has, it speaks to its popularity. Now, a very popular post from a while back drew my attention because it had 41,000 reblogs. This post was based around the premise of comparing the narrator to the mysterious category of other girls. It was titled with the bold assertion, I am not like other girls, and went on to list examples like preferring converses instead of high heels, playing video games instead of shopping, and so on and so forth. Sadly, that post wasn't the only one. This idea of being somehow unlike other girls is a common theme, as found here, and here, and here, and here. Now, aside from the irony of 41,000 girls on the, t on the internet declaring in unison that they are somehow unlike other girls, let's examine this idea of other girls somehow being bad. How many of you have been, or have wanted to be, that girl who could say, I'm friends with mostly guys. Girls just have too much drama. Or if you're at a social gathering, and you're the girl that goes to the all-girls school, the question immediately becomes, that must get so catty, so fast. Girls are all like that. But you're not like that, are you? It's so easy to put the rest down in order to boost yourself up. Here's the truth. Here's what you're actually saying when you say, I'm not like other girls. Here's why we don't stand in solidarity with our sisters. What you're actually saying is, I'm not like the media stereotype of what girls should be. I'm not perfect or catty or dramatic. I may or may not like the color pink. I may prefer listening to hipster music over One Direction. I'm valuable. I'm worth something. I can make a change. As blogger Claudia Gray puts it, Pop culture wants to tell us that we're all shallow, backstabbing, appearance-obsessed shopaholics without a thought in our heads beyond cute boys and cuter handbags. It's a lie, a flat-out lie, and we need to recognize it and say so instead of accepting that judgment as true for everyone else, but not for you. Here's the extended truth. There's a reason that very few girls are like the media stereotype. Girls also, all other girls are valuable. Other girls can change the world as well. Here's a short list of what girls have accomplished in our history. Joan of Arc, saved France, Mary Shelley, wrote Frankenstein, teen fangirls in the 60s discovered the Beatles, sisterhood, is just as eternal and just as valuable and just as world-changing as all of the brotherhoods that have been lauded throughout history, or romances. Gilgamesh and Anhidu. Achilles and Patroclus. Sherlock and Watson. Sisterhood, too, can work wonders. Take Spark an activist movement, a girl-fueled activist movement that I'm proud to call myself a member of. Spark's mission, as you saw in my bio, is to end sexualization of women and girls in the media. We have 36 members of all races, ethnicities, and sexualities from the U.S. and abroad. We're united by a common mission to end sexualization of girls and women in the media, to fight that very stereotype that makes us want to distance ourselves from other girls. And because a group of girls got together and formed a sisterhood, because we decided to change the world, Spark has accomplished some pretty amazing things. We successfully called on LEGO to stop misrepresenting women and their toys. We teamed up with athletes' organizations for, uh, to demand sexual violence education for coaches in the wake of the Steubenville trial. <clears throat> 
And lastly, we successfully petitioned Seventeen Magazine to release an anti-photoshopping pledge, promising to never photoshop their models. Now, on the topic of teen magazines perpetuating unrealistic expectations for girls, if you've ever opened a teen magazine, you would know that the advice given from boys to hair isn't always reliable. So, for the month of April, my spark sister Alice Wilder and I embarked on the Seventeen Teen Vogue Challenge. The challenge? To literally follow the advice given in Seventeen and Teen Vogue. Literally. We flipped a coin. Alice got 17, I got Teen Vogue. The first week, I attempted a braided mohawk and attempted to flirt with a boy using 17 flirting tips. So basically meant I had to bump into a guy and say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just the klutz around cute guys. And that didn't, that didn't go over too well. <laughs> The second week, Alice virtually starved herself by eating this for lunch to comply by 17's health regulations. The third week, I wore a skirt as a dress and went to the supermarket and posed with various items of vegetables. The fourth week, I wrote a critique of 17's implied rape culture or actually Teen Vogue's implied rape culture in their article on prom. And Alice wrote about 17's heteronormativity. So on the weekends, to de-stress from all of that perfection, we had Taylor Swift dance parties in our respective states of North Carolina and Pennsylvania. So Alice and I have never met in person, but I consider her a sister nonetheless, probably because we've had the common experience of dressing up in ridiculous outfits and posing with oranges. I mean. That's sisterhood. So Seventeen Teen Vogue recently brought on five amazing new girls to help us take our challenge to the next level. I mean, it's time for a makeover for those teen magazines. Who agrees? Yeah. Woo! yeah. But none of this would have happened, not from Seventeen's anti-photoshopping pledge, to that glorious picture of me with a bunch of oranges. None of that would have happened without sisterhood in action. It's not about the individual, it's about the action that we took together. Now let's talk about that sisterhood on a global scale. Last year I served as teen advisor to the United Nations Foundation campaign, Girl Up. To give you my quick elevator pitch, which you've heard already, Girl Up is a campaign by the UNF to mobilize American girls to raise funds and awareness for girls in developing countries. We help girls in our four program countries, Guatemala, Liberia, Ethiopia, and Malawi, gain access to health care, sanitation, education, and we work to prevent child marriage. Here are some appalling statistics surrounding Here are some appalling statistics surrounding girls in developing countries. So one in seven girls in the countries that we work in is married before the age of 15. That's younger than most of you in the audience, correct? Girls in the program countries that we work in spend up to 15 hours each day obtaining water for their families and communities, which means that they probably can't go to school. And worst is, less than, every, less than two cents of every development do dollar goes to programs for girls, particularly those ages 10 to 14. Now, in theory, it should be pretty hard to get American girls to care about what's going on in developing countries, especially in, like, Ethiopia. I mean, it has nothing to do with clothes, or shopping, or going out on Saturday night. And yet, Girl Up has over 350,000 supporters. And it's still a relatively new campaign. That's 350,000 girls who care about other girls in developing countries, and want to make sure that they have access to the same opportunities that we have. That's the power of uniting girls to change the world. As one of 16 teen advisors last year, I found in my fellow teen advisors the same sisterhood that we extended across the globe. There is Natasha, who always spoke with perfectly grammatical sentences and told the best stories. There is Rhea, with her infectious laughter and quirky sense of humor. And there is Annie, who is the kindest and most go-getter person I know. And all 16 of us were united by our common mission to help make the world a better place for girls. That's sisterhood. But I found many sisterhoods throughout my life. Some sisters 
helped me get through middle school with a heap of common awkwardness and a dash of humor. Other sisters helped me get through high school, and still others I have yet to meet in college or have just met. One of my favorite quotes from The Peach Keeper by Sarah Addison Allen goes, we're united as women. It's like a spider web. If one part of that web vibrates, if there's trouble, we all know it. But most of the time, we're just too scared or selfish or insecure to help. But if we don't help each other, who will? Sisterhood can be truly revolutionary. I guess ultimately, it goes back to my actual sister, my biological sister, Melissa. She has charcoal marie tooth, which is a form of muscular dystrophy, but she is the kindest and just most generous person I know, and she's obsessed with American Girl dolls, which are all about girlhood and celebrating girlhood, and she is the reason that I believe in girls. Look, I know, it's tough growing up in a culture that tells you that girls have to shine individually if they want to shine at all. It, we see it in Disney movies, we see it in romantic comedies, but they don't tell us the truth, that we shine brighter when we shine together. And all, ultimately, I want to end with this hope. I hope that no matter who you are, you recognize the lie of what the media tells us girls are like. And I hope that if you're a girl, you're sitting there thinking, wow, I am so glad I'm exactly like other girls, because other girls are great. And lastly, I hope that you find many sisterhoods throughout your life. History has always celebrated the power of men and brotherhoods as world-changing. Gilgamesh and Ankidu. King Arthur and the Round Table. Sherlock and Watson. So, why not Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants? Why can't girls change the world? Follow me on Twitter. Thank you.